To explain exactly how the machine operates, it's quite simple. It's a remote control. It's like a big RC car. It's got a hose that attaches to the back from the fire engine. It uh, goes through the appliance and comes out the nozzle. Our job is to utilize the remote to get it to the best possible location in the fire safely. Additionally, we have four uh, separate cameras. Uh, we have a forward motion camera that's, that's picking up everything as we're moving forward. We have a reverse camera so we can see what's behind the RS3. And attached to the front monitor, we have two cameras. One gives you basically the view of the nozzle in position to where you're pointing the hose stream and basically a thermal imaging camera which in uh, smoky conditions will allow us to identify uh, where the fire is located. We can also use that to locate down uh, civilians inside. What I've noticed in the past is that uh, the buildings are dilapidated to the point where they're no longer safe for firefighters to go in. Having the ability to fight the fire from outside with a machine like this is certainly something that, uh, that will benefit the organization because you're not putting people in a building that previously burned. So uh, here we have a lot of stuff that's above grade. Uh, two, three, four story buildings that are uh, from the early 30s and 40s. That is a fall collapse hazard that we're worried about coming down on the folks that are working really close proximity to the building. Using this machine obviously takes away that stress uh, for the incident commander. Once they've identified that this building is a complete loss, they'll use this machine to go in and actually protect the adjacent buildings. Additionally, the off-road capability of it, uh, here in the city we have uh, some equestrian areas where we get called for horses that get stuck in the mud. And in the past, we just utilized personnel to get in there once the, the horse is sedated by the, the vet and utilizing the personnel to pull the, the horse out of the, the mud. On the back of the RS3, there's a tow hitch, which we can uh, attach an attachment to it to help assist us in pulling the, the horse out. As far as, you know, uh, horse rescues, the trailer that this thing comes out on is small enough that you can actually put the robot and tow that trailer with the robot down with supplies. So you're reducing the footprint of personnel having to go in and out of this area. It's kind of what we're starting to learn with it is, is that the more you use it, the better it gets, um, only because you're starting to make it do the things that you need it to do. Fuel tanker on the freeway that's burning, that thing explodes and the rupture happens. To have people right up on that is obviously not in our wheelhouse. To have something like this behind me, to be able to track down the freeway with a, a dedicated water supply that can put 2,500 gallons on a fuel tanker that's threatening a, a blevy of some sort just gives you all the opportunity in the world to keep your people safe. Another situation that you might be able to utilize uh, the RS3 is say, for example, a barricaded suspect, you know, and, and that's a call that we get occasionally here in the city of Los Angeles where uh, uh, law enforcement will get called for a suspect that barricades himself in their, their structure or whatever the building is. Also, at the same time, they'll set fire to the structure. So now we're called to come up there to extinguish the fire. Well, in the past, we've had incidents where the individual then starts shooting at the fire personnel. So this will allow us to extinguish the fire from a remote location. We can drag the hose lines down the street, uh, keeping our personnel safe. So having the remote capability also puts him or the operator in a safe haven with the SWAT team or their armored vehicle, puts them in there and they can drive close by, remembering that uh, ultimately these things have cameras on them. So one of the biggest vulnerabilities is, is when you're poking your head around a corner, uh, once the robot comes around, you're seeing around the corner and obviously if it starts to take fire, you're backing out, but it gives you that that reference point. Originally, everything that we do is is uh, horsepower and manpower and, and water on the ground, you know. So in order to get that much water onto a fire, if you figure each nozzle is 200 GPM and you take that number and take 2,500 gallons a minute, you could see how many people you don't necessarily have to take out of the game, but that's that many more people that are out of harm's way. There's big fires that are burning that have fire coming out the front of the building. Well, it's so hot that you can't get close enough. Well, this thing's putting 2,500 gallons a minute at face level through the windowsill. So it's, there's an impressive amount of water that comes out of this.
smaller rural departments don't have the amount of uh, personnel coming to the fire that LA City does. So having a machine like this, where you're taking what normally would take four or five people to put that kind of water into play, you have one person that's actually managing that apparatus. Uh, so it certainly reduces the amount of folks tied to one operation and now you can spread them throughout the incident and have them doing uh, multiple tasks with the same amount of people. You know, having them in strategic locations at a, an oil refinery, again, everything's designed around um, the package. So our package has to be mobile. So when you start talking about a gas plant, you start talking about any of these hazardous environments where uh, personnel are, are, are har in harm's way when they go out there and do that, that work, to have something that they have available that could actually track out there with a pre-designated hose line that can actually offer uh, any type of water protection in a specific area, it's, it's worth its weight in gold. It's to whatever your limit is, whatever you guys decide to, to limit the, its capabilities. At this point, we're finding, like I said, every day, we're finding new and new, new uses for it.